In the councils of government, we must gar guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals, so that security and liberty may prosper together. For every old blackboard, there are now hundreds of new electronic computers. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever-present and is gravely to be regarded. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. Mm, that's the part I like. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see, that part, which I never see because you always talk about the military-industrial complex Mm -hmm. uh, warning, but further in that speech is the warning against scientific technocrats uh, that people kind of uh, brush over, I guess, or they never play that part. Uh, because they, they pick the short clip, but yeah, and but we're seeing that now. Hmm, technocrats, hmm, mm. science, hmm, controlling mm. medicine, hmm, right. controlling technology, hmm, computer, and, and then you have uh, the technocrats, as you put it, he might as well be talking about Facebook and Twitter and mm -hmm. back channel communication between the companies and the government. His speech is pretty uh, disturbingly yeah, current. He, he says that we need it because his, I was looking at it a couple of times last night. He says that we needed to build up this armament industry because the potential for war is so fast that you can't respond like in the old days where it took us months after Pearl Harbor to build up a military. I kind of get that. Then he, but he warns about it. But as you and I were talking about, is he warning us about the industrial part? Or I'm now looking at it that he was warning us against the military part and separating the two. Everyone, I don't think he was. I, I think okay, it, he well, was doing a, it together. This is a new idea that I've had that he may have been warning us about the military separately and in particular. Yeah, I, I feel like it was. Because he says complex. Oh, he says complex. So he's talking right. about both. Yeah. Right. And I, I think that one without the other is not a big deal. I mean, he's really saying the same thing as Smedley Butler. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's bad enough to have a military out of whack, but I think the fact that you have the, the industrial part is so important because why are they out of whack? Well, because they're in bed for all the money and, and you know, being aggressive, starting wars, increasing presence in Vietnam, things like that. Right. I, I don't know that you can have one way out the other. The technocrat, though, is very spooky, too. Right. Because he's, yeah. It's the same thing, but going from another angle. And right. then he mentions blackboards, which makes me think, okay, now you're talking about institutions yeah universities yeah and uh, what, what did we have i mean like right now what are we on we are on the internet right technically mm -hmm. and that was darpa which is the defense defense research projects agency in bed with stanford and all the universities they built the internet the internet was supposed to be a communication structure that could not be taken down from a nuclear attack mm -hmm. so the government's been in bed and running throughout the internet and then later now the World Wide web the entire time yeah i think he felt the power slipping away during the last year of his presidency but he does order the assassination of lumumba in the congo and they try to kill lumumba uh four times before jfk is inaugurated in this little window here where he's saying goodbye and the other guy's coming in the cia tries multiple times to kill him because they perceive him to be a communist and um he authorized that so uh, he's got blood on his hands for that, too. No, oh, and he also dealt with uh, Gary Powers. He that did whole that, incident. too. Right. 
And he also ordered the assassination of Castro. Um, so yeah. it's a real double-edged sword there with uh, uh, Eisenhower. And don't forget, he was there with Smedley Butler when they were getting rid of the uh, World War I vets in front of the White House. There, there was you a young Eisenhower there with, uh, with uh, General MacArthur mm -hmm. gassing we, the soldiers. And we know what happened with MacArthur. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Well, the guy in the middle <sighs> was, was Patton. That was the third guy there. Yeah. And the if you guys haven't seen the Smedley Butler episode, you might want to go back and look at that. A lot of these episodes are connected. Somebody in the comment section said, you know, when are you going to do an episode on the deep state? And I responded, we've done 75 of them. They're all <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I, I said, look, this is it's one, you know, connective dot here of all these different episodes. If you, we're doing one on the uh, deep state every week. So and this will I be agree. another one. And by the way, folks, I know I was late. I was waiting for more subscriptions to come in. I mean, come on. We're going to hit 25,000. Is that possible, know, Only In our well, lifetimes that we will see that kind of I, number? I, I would like to see 25,000. We are officially at 24,276. Uh, wow. Now, wow. Now, folks, two, we're right in there. I'm not asking for a big jump. Just a few hundred more. Let, let's try to push us up where and try to get to that 25k mark doesn't mean about, anything about yeah. locals i see a lot of people following locals, me locals which is getting me paranoid because i'm looking over my shoulder now why are they following me what the <laughs> hell's going on? what do they want me to do on locals i'm they not follow sure. me they follow me they follow me i never meet them oh, they don't you never know. A meet and greet where is that isn't there like a thing that they have to locals annual meeting i don't know okay yeah, no, you've, you've got me on that one. I, I have okay, no I idea. There was a convention of locals. Uh, somebody had mentioned at some point an annual convention. Maybe we could meet these people like Edward Martin. Who well, and Martin. To subscribe twice. And you know what, Mark? You can. You just have to take somebody else's phone. <laughs> take someone else's spot? <laughs> or take somebody else's phone or have another account. So it's, it's impossible to do it with the same account twice. But Oh, you're talking about Edward Martin. No, I'm talking yeah. about the locals convention thing. I don't know of any. I, okay. I, I, it could be. Great. Right. But uh, I would love that to happen. Right. Um, locals definitely is growing. As a matter of fact, I have a locals window open and a what? special chat there. Chat window. Um, yeah, there's chat in locals. And I have that there because locals is getting priority over people here on YouTube. So if, you know, people are paying to support us on locals, they'll get their question, you know, questions in the top of the queue That's fair. and I'll do the best I can on that. Uh, Donovan, I understand that the price may seem steep, but this is a valuable Patsy dog. <laughs> the you dog is over. How much is the dog? I don't know. It's like 20 bucks or something. I don't know, but is, this is a priceless Patsy. What do you Price want? They're going to be sold out and you're going to be weeping all through Christmas that you didn't get Oswald the dog. Look at Natalie. Natalie is not only joined Local 3, she's a I member know, on Natalie this channel. Natalie and her husband, these people, I saw them at the supermarket today. I saw them online. They follow me on Twitter. It's a good couple. Oh, this is a good idea. Do you have a wish list for Kennedy books? If I do. Don't, I don't have it off the top of my head, but uh, I do. I could write it If down. not, I can you know, put it together on Amazon, yeah. and then people can just I, I think I'm a hundred. To be honest with you, I think I'm a hundred shy. I think I there's a, possibly 400, and I've got a little less than 300. Uh, okay. Of must have books, must have books. Awesome. Now, Epstein's bed sheet necktie, great name. Um, That's funny. Tommy Morrison show. We're we're not covering that. We're just going to do Kennedy stuff here, and this is all America's Untold. But how did this and, guy get in here? This is a different department, Epstein. You're in, <laughs> this is ladies' hosiery. You got to go upstairs to men's pants. However, I still want to pitch that episode. It's on my Air Conley channel. I'm really, really proud of it. It is an untold story of an individual who had his life taken away. So if you can, check it out, Eric Hundley. It's the latest episode. And happy to answer whatever I can, locals or otherwise. And now um, back to the show. Eventually. <laughs> uh, William Bob Dillon. Dillon. Yeah, Mary Sherman. Oh, I believe Mary Sherman was killed by a disgruntled lover. Um, some evidence of that. She was stabbed repeatedly. And the, the stabbing uh, is usually done by intimate uh, people who know you. When you're bludgeoned to death repeatedly, uh, that's usually a lover's murder. This is just my opinion and my ex, you know, examination of the case. There's fire, obviously, and I think there was a guy who lived next door that she How was, was the body found? With 38 or 28 stab wounds and a burned up. No, uh, I meant um, a, a lot of times if, a, if a, it's a personal thing, 
Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes they'll cover the face or oh, that, that, I don't that, remember. There's, I don't remember yeah. that, but the autopsy I was looking at it last night. Um, so many stab wounds. I mean, th- that's not how people get assassinated with 38 stab wounds. This was an intimate lover. range, and they, right there is a, there's a rage thing, and um, that doesn't dismiss the work she was doing. I'm just saying that uh, uh, there was a fire, and the stab wound. The fire was trying to cover up the stab wounds feebly. Good, good to know. Okay, folks, um, for the questions, um, if you can help me out, because I understand people are having conversations in here, can you note Q hey, colon chat, or on. question um, and then the question? That way I just can more easily pick them out. And, of course, I'll be looking. Chris uh, Banks over there, he should straighten these people out. <laughs> He's the only logical one in there. What do you <laughs> see? Let him be in charge of the, the chat over there. All right, well, I got something in from locals here from Grapes. How Great. come Oswald shot Tippett, but not the two guys arresting him at the theater? What? Okay, well, yeah, it's a pre- presumption that he shot Tippett. I, I, you know, I'll oh, give you, I'll give you a quote. I'll give you a quote by a guy named Sergeant Gerald Hill. Uh, Sergeant Gerald Hill was one of the fixers for the Dallas Police. He was the first on the scene for everything. He was the first on the scene of the Tippett murder. He rearranged the boxes in the supposed sniper's nest. Uh, Gerald Hill was one of the up and coming. Uh, Dallas Police Department fixers. So he gets to the scene of the Tippett uh, murder, gets on the uh, what they call the CB radio and puts out a statement of the following actual words which were recorded. The the shell at the scene indicated that the suspect is armed with an automatic 38 rather than a pistol. Hmm. And that's from Gerald Hill. And when they got Oswald, he had a revolver. Uh-oh. The shells that were found were from an automatic 38. Okay. And uh oh, our relationship with Georgina is slipping. What? No questions for us, but wants to let us know that she may cheat on us. What? We're still a loyal fan. Okay. I know there's another history show with uh, Law and Lumber and uh, Scott Cardinal. So maybe she's talking about that. <laughs> she's eloping with him. I, I don't know. You know, hey, you know, it could, I understand spreading. The love, absolutely. Uh, question here we go. What do you think of the shooters being part of the S Force Operation 40 Project Mongoose? Um, well, Operation Mongoose was the overall project to kill Castro in Cuba. So I don't understand the question, but that I don't understand the question. Um, the shooters being part of the operation to kill Castro or being part of the project. That could Operation, be. Operation Mongoose was the official name of the project. Okay. So uh, everybody on, and his mother was trying to kill Castro. So I, you'd have well, to I'm be- guessing that they're saying did the shooters come from that that operation to shoot Kennedy? If it's not Oswald uh, to shoot Oswald. Castro, you, to shoot Castro, you mean? No, to shoot Kennedy. Because then they, uh, I, I thought a lot no, of the this, Kennedy- this is okay. Let me let me just be clear. This is part of a deep state blowback operation to blame Robert Kennedy, who was in charge of Operation Mongoose. This is another attempt to blame him for killing his brother. That's where this theory comes from. This is part of a blowback deep state thing, saying that oh, okay. people, just to be clear about the, the Operation Mongoose uh, Kennedy killing, that has been used by the deep state to blame, again, RFK for killing his own brother. Hmm, okay. Okay, uh, Georgina's clearing up. You said last week that we are cheating by responding to other shows. That's all. Still love you. Okay. okay. <laughs> no. I was we love acid. you, George. I was on acid that week, so I don't remember saying that. I don't either. Don't feel bad. Okay. Um, question. How much truth do you guys put in the documentary The State of Kennedy was accidentally shot by the Secret it, Service? It's unbelievable. It, 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 it explains why the deep state does this stuff. How many questions do we have to answer about this? And it really shows you the genius of the deep state coming up with the most cockamamie harebrained conspiracy theories. And, and they're so simplistic that a lot of cats buy into it. But they know they're genius at this and psyops. Right, Eric? I mean, this is their brilliance. The fact that a guy, st- George Hinckley, stood up in, in, the, in the Secret Service car and accidentally blew Kennedy's head off in full view of hundreds and thousands of people with an AR-15, uh, which is from the book Mortal Era. That Your favorite. How my favorite that book. Come up? It's my favorite Kennedy conspiracy psycho book, and it's been cited 
800 times during the course of this series. And in our comments. And in and our, our comments. comments. In our comments. And then when you point out that there is the Australian cop connection, it was like, it was never written by an Australian. There's a documentary of the book. So there's two things. Uh, the companion piece is a documentary. Just to make sure, if you didn't read the book, Nat Geo, <laughs> make sure you see the documentary version of the book. Well, here, I, yeah, this is another of your favorites then. Um, fine, I'll ask about your topic. Saw a documentary on Dorothy Kilgallen. Was she a loon and the court transcripts from Ruby trial valuable at all? Um, well, it's two separate questions. Was she a loon? She was not a loon. She was an alcoholic and a pill addict um, who, if you even look at, at, at the show that she was on that day, she can barely keep her head up. Uh, she's so high in that particular show. Uh, uh, what's my line? Right. What's my line? Yeah. yeah. I, was that that thing? Did that same D? I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. That was that day. That was the last day. Oh, she, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she was notorious, a notorious drunk. As for the Ruby thing, the Ruby trial was a circus. She got access to him. So did other reporters. The reality of it is that between the Ruby trial and her death, there's an 18 month window where she prints absolutely nothing of the so-called secret information she claimed to have gotten in an attempt to get a book deal uh, of the information that she had on Ruby. She had a daily column. She had access to the entire world media and she printed absolutely freaking nothing. I am done with Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> Okay, so um, do you no. think Dorothy <laughs> Kilgallen's death is related? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's she, she, you know, she was taking pills a lot. And, and look, let me tell you something if she wasn't a fall down drunk and a pill addict and had all these prescriptions to Nebutol and everything else, I would say, boy, that's surprising. But when someone is taking that stuff repeatedly, has a history of going to rehab, which she did. And they die. It's not a mystery to me any longer as a drug counselor. Okay. <laughs> okay. I totally agree. Uh, let's see. Um, how did Oswald miss Walker from 30 feet, but hit a moving JFK at over hundred yards? Mm, that's a double loaded straw man question. You put two of them together in one question. Touche, my friend. Uh, that's to assume Oswald shot Walker, and that's to assume he shot. JFK. I think that's I think that's supporting. <laughs> so, it could um, be that he didn't shoot either one. That's an odd. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the point. <laughs> um, okay, if the CIA documents are released or more documents we weren't aware of, would that actually help one way or another to definitely prove what was really going on? Okay, well, what's left there, from what I understand, is about uh, ten to fifteen thousand documents. And the bulk of them are about Mexico City, uh, from what um, I'm hearing. And Mexico City, the reason they're still there is that this thing would be an embarrassment to Mexico City and Mexico, and also to the CIA that was using Mexico City as a type of Casablanca in the 50s and 60s. There was a lot of stuff going on there because they had an open consulate to Havana. You could go to Mexico City and go to Cuba. From Cuba, you could go to the Soviet Union. That was kind of the the way to go. And I think there's documents in there um, implicating the Mexican intelligence people in their cooperation with the CIA. In other words, this photo I showed you before, Eric, but I don't know if we get to it today, of Sylvia Duran. Sylvia Duran was a Mexican national who was at the desk of the Cuban consulate, and she was uh, brought in and tortured on the orders of the CIA by the Mexican intelligence because she denied that the person who came into the consulate was the actual Lee Harvey Oswald. And the person, the impersonator of Lee Harvey Oswald who came into the consulate, she refused to identify him as Lee Harvey Oswald. And hence, she was taken to a basement in the Mexican police station and held for weeks, a very tiny little pretty girl, and tortured repeatedly um, on the orders of the CIA. And there's documentation uh, to that effect. There's actual CIA documents indicating to the Mexican authorities to pick up Sylvia Duran. This being released would be an embarrassment to Mexico because they were torturing one of their own citizens on the orders of the CIA. And that's just one example. I don't know, there may be other things at the bottom of that barrel that we don't know about, but I think the things that are left behind are things that have 
some content. There's Sylvia Dur Duran right there at her desk. Yeah. And she refused to identify Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, the actual Lee Harvey Oswald as the person who came in. She said a man saying he was Lee Harvey Oswald came in repeatedly uh, to and she sent him, whoever that was, to the Soviet embassy up the street. Then he came back and tried to convince her to give him a uh, visa to go to Havana. Uh, and she refused to cooperate, which is why they tortured the crap out of her. OK, and some more locals uh, questions. Um, Pasha is both here in YouTube and on locals. So Pasha's here's, everywhere. Uh, the, yeah, the, the Moyle. He's a Soviet <laughs> Moyle. He's a Soviet. <laughs> OK, um, let's see. How many people knew or suspected LBJ was, quote, the guy? And how is it so little came out of those suspicions? OK, for every Texan I know who is of a certain age believed he was the guy. Every Texan that I know in that age bracket said that everyone in Texas believed he was involved from the, the get-go. Uh, as to the rest of the country, I think there was a certain uh, naivete because they didn't know the real LBJ. But Texans knew the real LBJ. And at the beginning, uh, a lot of the polling indicated that a, a good amount of Americans believed LBJ was involved. All right. And locals and again. Exact numbers, but I mean, just an anecdotal uh, talking to people over 50 years who are Texans. Um, and some of you Texans can chime in if you're out there right now. And uh, well, it makes know. sense. I mean, yeah. everybody kind of knows their own state. Right. People. Right. It, it's right. like, it, right. We don't follow them as much. Right. Um, I mean, he's, he's landslide Linden. He's, you know, uh, Bull, Bull uh, Linden, the bullshit artist. I mean, they know this guy. Okay, um, also from locals, Mark, if you had a cloak of invisibility, what's the smoking gun file or record you'd want to find? Oh, well, I'd like to find that erased... Um, uh, conversation? Hey, yeah, the, conversa <laughs> the erased conversation between LBJ, uh, LBJ and Jago Hoover about the phony Oswald um, being in Mexico city, which I know I've heard. And I, and other people, Lopez has heard it from the Lopez report, who was the investigator for the house assassinations committee. And it was erased when it went to the university of Virginia, uh, by that guy down there, I forget his name, who took over the presidential library immediately. It disappeared when it showed up down there. Uh, I'd love to be able to hear that somehow. I, I'm sure there's copies of it around is what I'm saying. All right. Uh, also from locals, do pictures at Parkland verify whether the JFK limo had a bullet hole from the front? Yes. Always puzzled why the Secret Service wanted to get rid of it ASAP. Yes. And it was seen by multiple witnesses who testified uh, who worked at Parkland, who were nurses and doctors. And they saw it from the uh, as a, a bullet hole the size of a pencil going from the outside to the inside. And that's the only reason I know about the the uh, bullet holes because of these people who have said on film that they saw the uh, bullet hole in the windshield. And then that's why the car was flown to Cincinnati and later to uh, Detroit to have the windshield replaced and rebuilt uh, immediately. All right. Um, USSR shopping card on locals here cheating because this is about JFK, not RFK. But I'll let you get the question in. Hmm. Is there a copy of the radio show that Jolly West said RFK's killer would be found to be hypnotized? Um, first of all, it wasn't Jolly West who said that. It was. It was. Um, oh, that's right, Byron Brian. It was, it, yeah, it was. It was William William uh, um, Brian who said it. The psychiatrist and hypnotist. So I, I don't know if there is. It was ABC Talk Radio. It was a pretty big show. Uh, nightly show wasn't an obscure station in LA. Uh, if they have, you know, kept the tapes all those years, it would be great. But a, a lot of people in LA in drive time heard that uh, uh, William Bryan saying that. So uh, it wasn't Jolly West, is all I'm saying. All right. And it's the same person. Uh, when is RFK Must Die coming out? Huh. We... <laughs> <laughs> you mean the movie? Or... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. We did the show. Uh... Oh, it's with. It's, it's with um, Bobby Kennedy Jr. I'd like to see if uh, Bobby Kennedy the third uh, would like to direct it. He's directed one picture, and uh, oh, I see. You said years ago on Doctor Drew that it was coming out. So they listened to a really like that 2011 interview with Doctor Drew, I guess. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know about that. I, I just know where you know, currently where the status of it is. 
Yeah. Typical Hollywood. Okay, let me yeah. switch. I think we got questions in from Rumble. Um, let me see. Is there really a Bush connection from American Justice or Duchess? Um, in an obscure way. I mean, he was he filed a report about a guy in Houston um, a, a day or two before the assassination that some guy was threatening Kennedy in Houston. And whoever this guy was, was a guy just spouting off saying, I'm going to kill Kennedy. Um, so there is that paper trail of, of George Bush doing that as a CIA asset. Uh, but his involvement to the actual assassination, I've never found anything else. Other than uh, DeMore and Schilt, obviously the connection through the oil company that DeMore and Schilt um, was working for, for him. But again, that's uh, not a conspiratorial uh, connection of the, phys the physical assassination. Uh, that was DeMore and Schilt's job was to go around to places like Haiti and find oil deposits and then have them move in and take them over. Hmm. Okay. Somebody's arguing with you about Sylvia Durant, I guess. Okay. Sorry, Sylvia Durant went to a party with Oswald that was attended by a number of left-wing Mexicans, and she actually slept with him. Absolutely not true. Okay, sorry, James Bond. Sorry, James England. Bond. That's that's the spin from a guy, a, a guy named Phillips, who was the uh, um, Mexico City station chief. David Atley Phillips said that as part of his cover story for torturing Sylvia Durant. Uh, not uh, true. Not true. Okay, so uh, what does Mark know about the DIA? This is from Rumble. Okay, that's a good question. I like that, Rumble. Very good. The DIA was created by Kennedy because, as he said to his brother Bobby, how the hell did the CIA get weapons after the Bay of Pigs? He was astonished to learn that they were weaponized in the first place. There was never any legal document that authorized them to use military weapons and it just sort of evolved. So he created the Defense Intelligence Agency to put that as an overseer of the CIA, remove their weapons, and have the Pentagon, through an official means, control the weaponry that would be used by the DIA overseeing the CIA. The Defense Intelligence Agency was created, I think, in, um, I want to say, the summer of 1963, and um, in that year, and it was designed, or, or early 63. And it was designed to, uh, as he said, you know, s spread the CIA to the four winds and not have them be able to use military operations uh, with weaponry any longer. And they were not happy about that. All right. So the DIA is like an umbrella, was an umbrella uh, over the CIA. Okay. I don't know if I showed this um, about from our favorite Moyle, but you were talking about him with Vivian Barnes. Wait, oh, he that's pops right. up on these. That's he right. pops up all the time. Yeah. Hey, I like that. I like that. Uh, any info on Jerry Hemmings? Some, some, something about Hemmings. I mean, we were talking about Hemmings last week um, with uh, what's his name, the um, the other guy um, who was down there with Castro. Hemmings actually has a photo with him and Castro. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a lot involved with Hemmings that has to be explored. That may have to be an episode by itself, Eric. Uh, because that yeah. guy knows where a lot of bodies are buried. He was at um, um, Pendleton with mm -hmm. Oswald. He was here in San Diego with Oswald. They were, you know, uh, friends together. Um, and there's a connection between the two of them. And then they go their separate ways. But there is a link uh, as Marines between the two of them. We know that. And then he quits at the same time Oswald quits. And Hemmings goes down to uh, Havana and f actually fights with, with Castro in the jungle. I mean, when it's a great infiltration. You know, while Oswald was assigned to go to Moscow, Hemmings uh, was assigned to go to fight in the jungles of, uh, of Cuba. It was very interesting. And then comes back, and that was his mission. Very exciting guy. I mean, you talk about a soldier of fortune. I mean, wow. Yeah, and then lovely shots of that too, posing over. Anyway, um, oh yeah, over the dead bodies. Yeah, 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 yeah. classy. Um, this is a good point, Bob Smith. Uh, seems like if LBJ was involved, then it had to happen in Texas since he could pull the strings. But if so, what's up with the Chicago plot? How would it have been controlled in Chicago? Well, it failed. <laughs> I, I think they would have had different controls in Chicago. I mean, uh, you know, the same thing in Miami and the Tampa plot. I mean, you'll take them where you can get them. 
you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at history now backwards because LBJ rises to the presidency uh, because he's killed in Dallas. But I'll tell you something right now. If he had killed him in September, uh, actually early November in Chicago, LBJ still would have been the president and still be able to do what he wanted. I would believe that if he had his druthers, he would not want him killed in Dallas just because of all the suspicion. You know what I mean, Eric? No, I, I think he would have preferred to have him killed in Tampa in September. The, that that uh, motorcade canceled. And then in, in November, that motorcade canceled with with um, uh, uh, Laval, you know, being the Oswald that was the next patsy over there and the Cuban shooter in, in Tampa who was supposed to be a patsy. Hmm, OK, so uh, back to locals. Mark, was Wade involved in the murder or the cover up or both? OK, so keep in mind, Wade is one of the most corrupt district attorneys in the United States history. Uh, 20 years later, the Supreme Court of either Texas or the United States, I forget, overruled every single case he'd ever been involved in, freeing, I think, 80 percent of the uh, inmates who he convicted, framed and indicted. Um, Wade was so corrupt that literally they had to overturn every case he ever did from 1963 to 1989. So is he corrupt or is he incompetent? I don't know. That's a thin line. But the court said he was corrupt. So I'm going to go with that. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. OK, um, this is from Beezy's from Locals. Question. Any books written from the perspective of the woman, women that loved LBJ, JFK, and RFK? Yeah, there's a bunch of books. There's um, the one by his uh, LBJ's girl uh, mistress. I think has a book called uh, "Morning in Amer Morning in, in Texas." That's on uh, locals. That's on locals. I put the manuscript up there. That's a very yep. good book. Um, it's rare. Others, yeah. I mean, there's there's the Mary Myers book. Um, uh, she was a lover of JFK. She didn't write it, but it, I mean, it's written from her point of view. Uh, she was killed um, at a lake in a park in D.C., and um, she was the sister-in-law to uh, Bradley, the, the publisher of the Washington Post. And when he was um, at her house after the killing, he ran into James Angleton from the CIA uh, because Cord Meyer was her husband. Uh, Mary Meyer was the wife of Cord Meyer, uh, CIA bigwig. Okay, um, Epstein's bedsheet net guy says that Playboy published monthly books on those women. Okay, I don't know maybe about books, but the Garrison interview in the '67 edition um, is about 35 pages long, and it's well worth reading if you can get a copy of Playboy um, from October 1967, um, which I think is right here. This <laughs> particular one, if you're looking for it. It's got the most, it could be a book. I mean, it's got the most definitive interview with Garrison, uh, which Jim Garrison ever published, I think. And in fairness, too, by the way, Playboy did have some of the best quality writing out there for a long, long time. Yeah, and they paid so, the most money to the writers, too. I mean, look, Norman Mail, you're talking about Kurt Vonnegut. I mean. Okay, sorry. Was. Uh, it was a joke. Okay. It's hard to read sometimes, you know, with Epstein's bedtime. Somebody put uh, somebody on following my on following me on Twitter now, and the handle is back and to the left. <laughs> Which I thought it was pretty funny yesterday. That is funny. Okay, uh, back to locals and folks. Uh, the banner on the bottom that's the address for locals. It's also in the description. You can click it and go over um, on structure.locals.com. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, is, is that a new one? That's the same, same, oh, the same one. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it, it does help us a lot, you know, and again, I announce every show and we put stuff up there like the book we just mentioned. Uh, let me see. Okay. Regardless of whatever true questions he may have raised, what do you think of claims that Mark Lane had his own leftist political agenda and was receiving Soviet financing via West Germany <laughs> as part of a demoralization campaign. Oh, for the love of God. I mean, the guy was, you know, he was the, the uh, campaign manager for JFK for Greenwich Village in New York uh, as, a, as a mainstream Democrat. Uh, now, it could be obviously liberal. He was I mean, a communist, uh, highly doubtful. But look, he was a member of the New York bar, you know. So, I mean, he was a pretty mainstream attorney when he started this stuff and uh, try to represent Marguerite Oswald in front of the Warren Commission, which they disallowed. And then he told her, 
you know, she hired him and he, and she, she, he made her agree that if he found out that Oswald was the killer, he was going to announce it to the world. And she said, go right ahead. And she agreed with uh, Mark Lane that, um, uh, that, you know, they had that agreement when she hired him to represent her, her, her dead son. Now, look, they, they've tried everything to smear Mark Lane. For the love of God, they came up with the phrase conspiracy theory, the CIA, just for Mark Lane. When you read the documents, they created that for one man. And it's because Rush to Judgment was the number one book on the New York Times bestseller list and did more damage to the Warren Commission in less time than all the documentaries since and, uh, and since 1964. They literally had to destroy Mark Lane's reputation, and it remains intact to this day, despite, you know, attempts by the deep state to come up with things like that. And that's a uh, ten memo ten thirty five nine sixty, right? Uh, I don't know the number of the memo offhand, but it, that's you know, about conspiracy theory. Correct. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the CIA document released, I think, in nineteen sixty seven. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I was just looking up notes. Right, there's uh, the documentary of Rush to Judgment, and then there's the book Rush to Judgment. Um, both of them well worth seeing because Lane literally gets off his ass and goes and interviews these people on camera. Hey. And it's a permanent record um, that is well worth watching because it's so close to the time of the assassination. The book, of course, completely scared the shit out of the deep state, and there was nothing they could do except... Uh, contact their 1,200 media assets in TV, radio, and film and indicate to them and print uh, that when they refer to Mark Lane or others, refer to them as conspiracy theorists. And that tag has stuck to this day. Did not exist before Mark Lane existed on the scene. And here we go. <laughs> Our local <laughs> operative. Antonelli <laughs> escapes from the mental institution. How did he get out of that straitjacket? I mean, he's uh, like... Dude, Kelly's <laughs> back. A resident crackpot. All right, right, Sean, thank you for the super chat. Uh, so Trump did something similar with the executive order is, um, last year in office relating to CIA using military assets for travel. Right. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with I'm it. I'm familiar with that, but yeah. You. I mean, they've been trying to chip away at this thing. I, there was a, st a story today that he wants to uh, burn down the entire administrative state when and if he gets back in. So, I mean, that's been the administrative state is the legal term for the deep state, you know, so they conflate each other in that regard. But yeah, I mean, RFK tried even to get the Secret Service uh, away from his brother. He did not trust the Secret Service. And uh, Abraham Bolden, uh, maybe we'll do an episode on him. He was just recently pardoned by Biden, uh, who right. was framed when he tried to blow the whistle after the Chicago plot by uh, Thomas uh, uh, Lavelle uh, Valley who Thomas Arthur Valley, uh, who was apprehended during the Chicago plot, who was the next Oswald and Bolden was framed on some sort of um, um, conspiracy to commit uh, bribery and um, as a treasury agent, a secret service and put into prison. And he was handpicked by JFK as the first African-American White House detail secret service agent and ended up in prison, oddly enough. Good times. Yeah. Um, to back to chat, uh, Dan Davis, thank you for the super chat. Why use Intel ops as patsies rather than usual suspect nutcases? Uh, I don't know what that means because it, it, we're saying that um, Oswald was a an actual Intel op, right. Why use him as a patsy when you could just find some nutcase out there you can just you know, whatever, uh, throw away like he okay. has skills. Well, well, it's a question of skills, but you also need the you need the legend. You need the fact that he defected to the Soviet Union, the fact that he came back, the fact that he, you know, did operations making believe he was a Marxist. I mean, you can't just take a guy who works in a gas station, you know, which they do now, and just say he's a crazed guy on, on meds. I mean, they, back then they were politicizing and trying to start a war between the United States and the Soviet Union. Taking a grease monkey from a gas station is not going to give you the connection to Fidel Castro and Khrushchev. That's why he was a human. He was a human sacrifice. Now, keep in mind, the perception of that question is you've got the entire bulk of the intelligence agencies going against this one man instead of the idea that there were factions of generals and other players mm -hmm. who, who were doing this, looking for a guy 
like Oswald, who was roaming around Dallas doing intel work. True. And that's a good point. Mark and I have talked about this a lot on the side. The majority of, for example, FBI agents were perfectly law-abiding, straight shooters. That's part of the problem that the deep state had is that these agents did their job, wrote the reports factually as they saw them, and it was higher up. It was the political aspect of the FBI. By the way, much like now, there are some heavy politics in the upper echelons of the FBI, but the people on the ground who, you know, are wearing out the shoe leather are good agents. They're right. good people. There's and plenty of straight 301 uh, uh, files on uh, uh, reports by FBI agents from the ground in this case. It's a handful of people. It's not every single FBI agent, every single CIA agent. I mean, it, people, their imaginations just go crazy thinking there's 10,000 people involved in this thing. It's not. There's a lot of people, but it's not you know, these two agencies combined. Right. And and that's why it could be pulled off for so long. I mean, the more people you right. have, the more it starts to unravel. Right. Um, John Yarber, Mark, your favorite storytelling commentator. Best show on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. You know, and, who used to be good was Garrison Keillor, but he got me too. Had to go home to Lake Wobegon. I used to watch him as a kid. Yeah, Garrison Keillor. And then you have the great interviewer, Charlie Rose, me too as well. Charlie um, Rose, yeah. Yeah. Um, this one. Will you do an episode on the Cabell brothers? Cabell. We got corrected. Yes. Uh, somebody yeah. in the chat said that they were, lived in Dallas since 52 and as Cabell. So now I'm I've heard it both ways. I'll have to talk to my Texas aficionados on that. I've heard it. Okay. Well. But yeah, either way, we're going to do it. Uh, James Files, I couldn't care less about. But uh, the Cabell brothers, definitely, because I think Charles Cabell as a general was linked to Curtis LeMay as a general, who was linked to Walker as a general. And, and obviously linked to the brother, the mayor, Walker and Cabell, the mayor, were best friends. Uh, we, we see them on film at multiple events. Uh, uh, Earl Cabell or Cabell, uh, the mayor of Dallas, very close to General Walker. So and then you've got his brother who was fired by JFK. And then you've got LeMay at the autopsy smoking a cigar. So we're going to get into um, I don't know if we'll do the Cabell brothers together. But I don't know what the grouping is, but we're definitely going to cover Cabell. Okay, and here we go with the, the same basic question. Of course, it's got to be Ken. Um, how many hundreds of people were in this, on the scheme? Not even close. I'm going to guess maybe a dozen or two. Because remember, there's people more. who actually knew what was going on. Yeah. But then other people are just being used. Like you mentioned the autopsy, right? Mm-hmm. The doctors weren't in on the scheme, uh, but they, they, were ordered, they, well, they were ordered after the fact. Right. I think that's the difference. Yeah. I mean, look, in on the scheme, what what level of the scheme? You've got compartmentalization. You've got these three autopsy doctors. They know something's up. When somebody tells you not to examine a wound, Eric, you know, there's a reason not to examine that wound. You know, right. But that's that's following an order. That doesn't make you a participant. No, no, no. But you're you're an an indirect co conspirator. I mean, indirectly. I mean, you're, you're whether you're following the orders or not, you're not doing your job. And also, how about the 28 doctors at Parkland who they flipped saying the, mm. the wound in the back of the head did not exist after they all said it did? Are they part of it? Not really. But, you know, they Perry lies under oath. You know, Dr. Perry lies. He originally says this is an entrance wound. Then he reverses himself saying it's an exit wound under oath. Is he part of the original plot? Obviously not. So I would say I'll tell you something. Might have been a couple of hundred people. You know what I mean? Uh, all things considered, might be a hundred people. Okay, roughly. I, just, I I feel like then you're talking about different levels. Like yeah, people. Right, have I to am. Fast, I, you're right, you'd have to so. define. You'd have to define what level. You know what I mean? You have to define what level you're talking about. Well, like the here we go. Was the mob involved? Of course they were. I mean, because you're, you're Ruby. You say what involved in what though? What are they involved in? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because Ruby gets fifty thousand dollars through the Campisi brothers indirectly. And he gets paid to rub out Oswald. How do we know that? He gets a safe, puts it in his office, has it cemented or drilled into the ground. He signs his life over to his attorney, the power of attorney, gives the attorney to his, the money to his attorney, 50000 He owes a similar amount to the IRS. He tells him to take care of his debts before he goes to the Dallas jail. We mm-hmm. know that. And the $50,000 comes where? From outer space? No. It's funneled through some organization, through the mob, and he 
this mobster, Ruby, who's got links to the mob going back to 1948, to Nixon, to gun running, 1958, to Havana. He's obviously a mobster in that regard. But are they involved with the, with the snipers? Are they involved with the autopsy? Of course not. Of course not. But there is, you could say, a mob involvement. You know, I mean, did Marcello wake up one day and say, I'm going to organize a super incredible plot to kill this son of a bitch Kennedy who had me deported to Guatemala or Honduras? I, I think not. But there's Os there's Ruby getting the $50,000 to rub out Oswald. So you, you would have to say there is mob involvement. Okay. Um, locals, give me a break, wants to know. What caused Robert to start researching the events surrounding JFK's assassination? Was it something job-related, or was he just curious about it? Well, everybody of a certain age has been curious about it since you grew up. I mean, there's that. But, I mean, I, it, I, it really got in-depth when I, I started to do this 10-hour miniseries with Oliver Stone um, in 2008, it, oh, 2007, 2008, 2009, where I really went in for a deep dive. I took over a year uh, of my life just to look into all these different aspects for the uh, 10 hour miniseries. So y that was a big deal. But I, I had researched this myself for many years, just for my, uh, my own education. So I knew the basics, like a lot of people do, you know, who are uh, from my uh, generation. But that was a big dive for a year doing that. All right. Uh, thoughts about George Bush Sr.'s possible involvement. I think there was an FBI memo warning about Kennedy being shot when he comes to Houston. I, I think we addressed that before. What, it, he wasn't going to uh, be shot in Houston. It was George Bush just talking about a guy who said he wanted to shoot Kennedy who happened to be from Houston. Okay. Well, always. I don't think there was a plot there. No, he, he was, from what I've seen, Bush was near it, but not yeah. directly. And the Demora Shaw. Um, and, right. I mean, you got Demore and Schilt. I mean, it's clearly a friend of his. And but Demore and Schilt, like I said, had other jobs to do, like finding how to what what they would do would be to find oil. And Demore and Schilt was a um, a guy who knew how to find oil. And um, he worked for Bush's oil company and they would find oil off the coast of Haiti and they would get these guys to sign leases. I mean, this is where it overlaps with intelligence. Okay, back to locals. Um, actually, no, I had one from Rumble. <laughs> um, it's fun jumping window to window to window. You like this, right. huh? Oh, yeah, it's a treat. Question. This is from Mary Forbes 14. Doesn't the call from Hoover to Johnson disputing Oswald's presence in Mexico City before assassination prove Johnson ordered it? Uh, it doesn't prove Johnson ordered it. It proves that Oswald was framed, though. Because the incident is described in September by the CIA, and you, you could find other areas where he's being framed. But that the reason that tape is erased, but luckily the transcript exists, is because it indicates the framing in Mexico City by David Atlee Phillips, who hated JFK's guts because he had trained the men for the Bay of Pigs. Some of those men also being trained by David Ferry, who we're going to do an episode on on Tuesday, which I recommend you all tune in for because it's going to turn your heads around about this uh, JFK assassination. Uh, Ferry, one of the trainers, Atlee Phillips, one of the main overseers from the CIA, is the Western Bureau chief of the CIA. And what that frame up was designed to do was to show you the trail of Oswald trying to get to Havana and to the Soviet Union to start a war after he escaped from Dallas and linked the killing to uh, the Soviet Union and also to Havana. So the tape is very important. And um, it was erased for that particular reason. It is dynamite. And the transcript is still dynamite. Because what J. Edgar Hoover is telling uh, uh, LBJ is there's an imposter, you know, claiming to be Oswald. But we already know that. Because in 61 and 1960, uh, uh, Hoover has memos about people impersonating Oswald, buying mil uh, trucks and vehicles and sending them down to Fight Castro in Cuba. They had signed his name to buy vehicles in New Orleans. And there's, you know, he, he's being tracked as a, obviously as a defector in Russia. But this is separate from that. J. Edgar Hoover has a memo talking about Oswald in 1961 that they're signing his name to buy 
vehicles, jeeps, military jeeps, which you see briefly in the movie JFK outside the window at 544 Camp Street when Oswald is in there with Bannister, uh, when Bannister is up there in, inside with Ferry and they're bringing in arms through that office. The jeeps are outside. Those jeeps were bought and paid for and whoever bought and paid for them signed the name Lee Harvey Oswald to the sales receipt. Lovely. Okay. Um, from uh, locals, question. Allegedly, Richard Nixon was at the LBJ slash Hoover party the night before. Do you believe Nixon was involved or had pre-knowledge? I believe he had pre-knowledge. I, 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 he was at that party. He was in Dallas. He was there for uh, the Pepsi-Cola Bottlers Convention, I believe. Um, and the next day in the paper was a, a news leak from Nixon uh, to the Dallas Morning News on the front page that said LBJ to be dumped from ticket by JFK in 64. That came from Nixon. And Nixon alone didn't make that up. That was in the wind. Uh, RFK was closing in on LBJ to indict him, kind of like Spiro Agnew, who was uh, indicted while Nixon was president. They took out his VP. LBJ was about to go down for m many of the Bobby Baker crimes and much of the uh, um, the payoffs and the bribery from defense contractors like General Dynamics. If you made a defense contract, even when he was uh, uh, in the Senate, uh, the, you had to pay LBJ $50,000 to get the contract approved at a gov government level. So he was going to go down one way or the other. And I think, you know, look, all roads lead to him being removed from the vice presidential vice pre presidential ticket. And he was a desperate man and desperate men do desperate things, Eric. All right. Um, back from locals, USSR shopping was qu clarifying the project she was asking or he was asking about was a radio play. I forgot about that, that you had talked about doing a while back for the art. Oh, that, with, that's with Tom. Yeah. I, I don't know what's going it, it wasn't a radio play. It was kind of like a reading, uh, but uh, I, like a it, podcast I, series. Right. It was a podcast yeah. series. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, to be honest with you, I got to talk to Tom about and that. And they're asking if we can crowdfund it. Don't well, know. Interesting talk, idea. Yeah. Let me talk to Tom about that. That was, it was a pretty big project. And I think it was more of a COVID project, you know, that mm. was you know what I mean? It was kind of like a, a thing that maybe we can do something during COVID that because everyone was isolated, but uh, right. still alive as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Well, I'm glad. Thank you for clarifying. By the yeah. Way, thank you for USA. clarifying that. Yeah. Um, to, 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 to go back. I've got some super chats in here to go through. Um, did I get this? No, I did get that. Um, Dan Davis wants to know, uh, already asked that. Okay. Why am I? Sorry, too many windows. Too many windows for Hunley. There was a bunch of windows on the sixth floor at the school depository, too. Mark, have you ever heard Meatloaf's story of having his friend's car confiscated by sex seizure, I guess, um, at Love's Field and drove to Parkland by on Huckabee? Great story. I, I don't know what that is, but I guess Meatloaf took it to the grave unless he has some more details. Not a like good point. Like a bat out of hell. Um, if they ever release the JFK files, will there be substantial evidence in there that makes it difficult to deny conspiracy anymore? Or will all the good stuff be redacted? There's enough evidence. Well, I don't think you can deny conspiracy any longer. I mean, that, that ship has left the station. I mean, there's nothing in there that's going to say, by the way, it's we already know it is. I mean, there's 10 million pieces of evidence. You know, this idea that there's going to be a, a smoking gun, literally a physical gun, in, in the files uh, is a little crazy. But like I said, I, I think the files that are remaining are the most sensitive to uh, events and people that are still around today. And, and, and like, it's not, you, people look at it the wrong way. Like, that's why I was mentioning it would be embarrassing to the Mexican government to have it learned that they tortured one of their own citizens. It's things like that that are in there. Well, a lot of conspiracies are that way. I mean, yeah. I, I, I brought up a, a good example would be, um, let's say I, I worked for Mark at um, a bank and he was my regional manager and I was lifting money out the side. And then Mark confronts me about it. And I'm like, well, you know what, Mark, this is your branch and you're responsible for right. me. Right. So if you have me arrested, 
I did it under your watch. Right. So you might quietly fire me or just get me to go out the door and then cover up what I did because you don't want to lose your ass. And then your boss may not want to lose their ass, too. So a lot of conspiracies are literally just that. They're, somebody does something or there's incompetence and they cover it up after the fact. Well, keep in mind, 96% of the files have been released because of Oliver Stone through the JFK Records Act. Uh, th this idea that there's tons of files is just not true. I mean, the files after files after files have been released. Now, uh, or, were many of them destroyed? I'm sure. Are they redacted? Yes. I mean, uh, did ONI, Office of Naval Intelligence, come into the House Assassinations Committee and say, we destroyed our files, go F yourself? Yes. You know, and, and people are obsessed with the CIA. Look at ONI, people. ONI is who Oswald worked for. He didn't work for the CIA. He went for Office of Naval Intelligence. And that's the oldest intelligence organization in the United States going back to the 1880s, 1890s. It, not everything is CIA, people. Remember that. There's other organizations out there, like somebody mentioning DIA. Mm -hmm. Look at ONI. And uh, these agencies do things, and they don't take out ads in the paper to say that they did them. You know, the CIA is like a generic... Well, I uh, think it's an umbrella term. It's an umbrella, right. But I'm yeah. saying, you know, Dulles, no, Dulles was on the Warren Commission. You didn't see a guy from ONI on the Warren Commission. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's there's different people involved in different things here, but Oswald was ONI. All right. Um, Sean Brim saying Oswald wasn't in on it from his reaction to the whole thing. Probably true, of course. Yeah. I, I mean, he was trying to piece it together himself. He didn't know what was going on. Uh, Soltron, what was Ruby's quote about how vast the conspiracy was? What's up with all the ties to the aerospace industry? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, he said the, the answer is in, Ruby said on, on film that the answer is sitting in the White House and the, in the Oval Office right now. I mean, that, that's Lyndon Johnson. I mean, you couldn't be more specific than that for some guy who was injected by Jolly West. He still had his wits about him. He said, you know, I mean, he talked about a vast conspiracy, uh, Ruby. Uh, it, that did him no good. Sure. By saying that, that did him no good. Keep that in mind. They weren't going to let him out because he said that. All right. This is your favorite question. Go ahead. All was right. Dorothy John. Kilgallen murdered because of her investigation. Hold on. Who killed her and what did she know? Hmm. Let me think about this. I, she was probably killed by George Bush Sr., you know, who really had it in for her. I think she uh, wrote a nasty review of one of his oil companies, and that was it. She was a dead woman walking at that point. But uh, <laughs> good, good question. Good question. I have to think about that one. The obsession with Darth, I, it's amazing. I, I don't know if it's from What's My Line or, I mean, I there's more obsession for Dorothy Kilgallen than there is from Ma Marilyn Monroe. Well, on our channel, for sure. Yeah. Um, have you seen Evidence of Revision, the documentary that shows the news coverage after JFK's death? Oh, sure. Of course. Everybody has. Yeah, you have to see. That's one of the uh, main pieces of visual uh, documentation. Sure. Yep. Mark, what's your favorite anecdote of LBJ? Oh, my God. That's a tough one. Well, I think it's something to do with Jumbo. He takes out Jumbo and he shows it to the other. Con well, OK, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this one. He gets all his aides to swim in the pool naked. Uh, in the White House pool. He has them come out. He ridicules their um, members. And then he shows them Jumbo and he shows them what a real thing should look like. And these are his aides. That's a good one. What about the car? Driving the oh, car the cars, into the lake is a good the, one, the too. Floating car is a great one. I mean, <laughs> and, 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 where they, they jump out of the car and it's a floating car. He would drive into the And that's lake. actually kind of funny. That's it, never mind him. That's uh, that's well, genuinely how about, funny. How about move over, honey. This is your president, which he does <laughs> to every single woman who stays at the ranch. Yeah, that's a little well, less funny. Uh, <laughs> that, it's, it's definitely crude as hell. I mean, there's so many good ones. I mean, if they ever made a movie about LBJ, if it was ever a real script, I mean, the thing that uh, uh, Meathead did was appalling with Woody Harrelson mm. or uh, Rob Reiner. All right. Who killed Kennedy, really? What, what are the Jackie Kennedy hiding? What is Jackie Kennedy hiding? Well, Jackie Kennedy said it was LBJ, and Manchester wrote it down in his book, and then the Kennedys sued Manchester to get it out of the book. So he took the 28 pages, put it in his vault, and then his son got it when Manchester died, uh, death of a president. Uh, he was the official writer hired by Jackie Kennedy to do 
the biography of the assassination and uh, some excerpts from Life magazine, but not that. And in the interviews, she felt that it was LBJ. So, I, I mean, that's uh, pretty bold, pretty bold. I shouldn't indulge him, but this is funny. What? LBJ was a Milton Berle of politics. You know what? Dinelli, that's a good one. That's a good one, Dinelli. You yeah, got yeah, it. Every yeah. once in a while, a maniac gets it right. I am telling you. He was a Milton Berle <laughs> of politics. That's funny. Good work, man. All right. Um, Soltron, did the CIA use, use the Galen organization for their boots on the ground intel in the USSR when Oswald was there? Is it a big deal that Oswald spoke German? Um, I don't think he spoke German, but he spoke Russian. And I think the Galen organization was used for everything related to the Soviet Union, um, including stuff like Oswald being in Minsk. Uh, you know, when he uses the Minox camera to photograph uh, things in Minsk, he photographs military installations installations and um what they looked like um from the Minsk point of view and um yeah the the galen organization was taken in because of the soviet union that was the number one reason that we had operation paperclip hmm. and galen was part of that i mean um i think he lived in new york for until he died he had a an apartment in new york city all right soltron likes the name jumbo johnson Okay, well, I've never heard that, but <laughs> you can you can use that Jumbo Johnson. <laughs> That's pretty funny, LB Johnson. All right. Um, uh, that's RFK. I, I'm, there's not enough time. Is Bolton Bolton? Um, okay, these are all questions. They're not Kennedy questions, locals, and I'm too backlogged, so I've got to. I have to literally. Have we ever done summer. a JFK Q and A? We did a Q and A, but not on this. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we did a JFK Q and A probably a month ago. Okay. Or maybe a little more. I I don't know. And we'll do more, and we'll do it again because I mean, obviously, we're running short on time. That's why. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I was jumping around. Um, it's a good question. Just overall, um, what is a handler, and what do they do? And really, a handler. I can actually answer some of this because I've had CIA people on. Um, most CIA officers are technically handlers. So the operative that you see going in there, they collect locals in another country mm -hmm. and recruit them, essentially snitches, uh, much the same as the FBI does here with uh, informants. That's what they're um, doing. Now, all the James Bond stuff, they don't do a whole hell of a lot of that. They, they, just, they find people who are informants and they flip them whatever a handler going back the other way would be like a, a kgb let's say i'm a disaffected college student and i hate everybody or whatever and i get involved with some drugs and i meet this really nice young woman and then she takes me back to see somebody and then that somebody says hey eric we need to talk to you what's up well, what's i'll give you an example in, in minsk there was a guy named ernst titovitz who i befriended in the late 90s uh he was a kgb operative and a medical doctor actually and he was um, uh, Oswald's sidekick, and they would go pick up girls together. They would hang out together, party together. But he was clearly the KGB handler or overseer of Oswald to keep an eye on him when he was in Minsk. And then, obviously, we now know George DeMore and Schilt when he was in Texas and handed him over to uh, Ruth Payne when he was on his way to Haiti. So she became his handler. So handlers can do a lot of different things, right, Eric? I mean, they... They could get you apartments. They can get you jobs at the Texas School Book Depository. Uh, they can get you in trouble. They can. Ruth Payne could be a handler. Right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they could do a lot of different things for, for you or against you, depending on what the orders are. A uh, handler cuts both ways. They can, you know, be your demise or they can be your savior. Well, they're like an agent. Yeah. Well, they could be. I mean, but. No, I what, mean, like a sports agent or, or somebody, you know, you know, they get things done either by you, for you, or otherwise. When just, Oswald uh, leaves Minsk to come back to the United States, he goes to Rotterdam, into a safe house in Rotterdam, and there he unstraps his diary, which he taped to his chest uh, to get out of the Soviet Union, his personal diary. And it, that's where he hands it off to these two agents who are handlers in Rotterdam in that safe house. And in there is the information that they wanted, which was how everything works in Minsk. Uh, that means telephones, department stores, bus schedules, TV, how everything works had to be done by human intelligence back then in the early 60s because we didn't have 
any of the electronics that we now have or the technology. So you literally had to have boots on the ground, which was why Oswald and 12 other defectors were part of a, a team assembled by, Jan by Angleton to be dropped behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, the bulk of them were, were, their legend was that they would, you know, uh, embittered military guys who were defecting to the Soviet Union. And the Soviets were onto this. But the point of the matter was the human intelligence is what Oswald gathers in his so-called diary. And that's taped to his chest and that is turned over in Rotterdam, uh, where I think he was lie detected and um, possibly sodium pentothal. Never heard as a verb, but okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that up. That's a new one. Okay, fellas. So if you had to wager, who would you put your dollars down as the author of the hit? Who decided it was time for him to go, in your opinion? We're coming to a conclusion and we're yeah. not coming, we're not gonna yeah. release it yet, but you you'll kind of get a, a vibe of where we're going over time. Right. It's not who you think it is, I'll tell you that much. Because I didn't think of, of this until recently. Yeah. All right, what is terrifying? is the deep state is more powerful and entrenched now than back in 1963 when JFK was killed. Um, well, I, don't I don't know. know I disagree. True. I disagree. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. Uh, we, we just happen to see stuff about it now, but... Right, I mean, we didn't know I, I anything about, about this it. thing. It's just yeah, bigger. I don't know. It's a good question. Um, oh, here, your friend wrote a book on this. Well, what is the total death count or suicides of JFK assassination oh, victims? Witnesses? Yeah, of course. According was it to, uh, Belzer. Belzer. Yeah, Richard Belzer. Yeah, he wrote a whole book just on this, right? It's over 100, right? I, I don't know. I haven't I haven't checked out his book, it's, but it's I know hard he to did. pinpoint it because some of the deaths are just regular deaths. But yeah, I mean, I understand it's over 100. Is it possible to do a show on who may have been the actual shooters and who they were connected to? I doubt it because I think my my feeling is it was these Alpha 66 Cubans that they caught uh, temporarily in Chicago and released. I think they were trained sharpshooters, uh, military guys who they were using, uh, Bay of Pigs guys. I don't think they wanted to use regular American, uh, Anglo-Saxon Americans. I think they were using these Cubans. And Walker's connection to Alpha 66 will be explored uh, at greater length. But I think the physical shooters were these Alpha 66 Cubans. All right. Uh, Belzer. Belzer from um, no. God, Homicide. <laughs> it's uh, you from Shana. No, that's, I think that's Bowser. <laughs> Richard uh, Belzer. Belzer is a, he's an actor and he has a unique, he's played the same character, I think, in seven different uh, movies and television shows. Richard Belzer was a brilliant stand up comic in New York who later became an actor. Yeah, and um, he's known as a stand-up, but later it was uh, on all these. I mean, as uh, long as his career has been as an actor, I don't know. Right, I mean, kind right. of both. Well, it's not like he did any movies. He was in he's Law and Order, and that's um, all he's yeah. ever done. He's never done a film, and uh, well, what I, I love it's the same character. Right, right. I, that's yeah, true. I, that's true. Was it Detective John March or something? Yeah. I, I think, I, he, I think he lives. I think he lives in France now. Crazy. Um, Rich Brown, great job. Love this one. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, Scott Cardinal, the other historian. Um, uh, again, Meatloaf. <laughs> I don't know anything Meatloaf. Uh, we, uh, yeah, his proximity to Kennedy that day. His what family, his father worked in law enforcement at the time. Maybe Meatloaf is from Dallas. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. It just might be some oddity, though. I mean, I don't, you know, it could be some odd thing. All right. So to wrap up, this is a good uh, last question on here. Make sure there's no super chats. Why didn't the deep state just eliminate Mark Lane? Well, it wouldn't have really done anything because he, he already published the works. You would have to eliminate the documentary and the book. I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, having critics out in a, in a, in a pseudo democracy. So you, who, who would debate the empty chair? You know what I mean? Like if you can, unless you're going to destroy his book and the documentary, what difference does it make? The work is already there. All right, I guess uh, Meatloaf had a, Mike Huckabee, the governor of Arkansas. Well, my, <laughs> Huckabee like, was on Fox for a while, so maybe Huckabee interviewed him, and that's where it came up. I, uh -oh. I'm, I'm not familiar with that. I'm not familiar with that one. Linking Huckabee to the assassination would be new, that's for sure. What happened to his daughter? Did she become governor of Arkansas or what? Well, uh, no, she uh, no, she no. Well, oh, I don't know. I know she was I working know. on Trump's staff, but um, right. oh, okay, yeah, Detective John Munch, Munch is Belzer. Okay. 
Low and Sorry, order. now we're back here. Okay, I was slightly off. It was an executive order from Trump. Is a memo from Chris Miller about military support for the CIA. Okay. I don't know. That's I know yeah, to see uh, that, but that's what RFK was trying to do, and that's why they created the DIA on the JFK was to demilitarize the CIA. How they got weapons, nobody seems to know. Uh, th there was a a time when I think Harvey walked into Harvey or one of the top CIA bigwigs walked into the Oval Office with a machine gun uh, to demonstrate um, the amount of weapons the CIA had, and nobody took away the machine gun. He walked right into Kennedy's office and to demonstrate that they were armed, and the Secret Service didn't disarm him, which was weird. People got spooked after that. Okay. Um, one last question for locals. Um, sort of question statement. Okay, great show and has always puzzled me why the Soviets let Oswald remain in the USSR. It's a, it, it, yeah, because you're watching them. I mean, it's okay. I mean, they're doing the same thing. I mean, they had agents here. You know, I mean, that's the, that was the way the thing ran. I mean, you could, you could, when they, I'll just give you a more detailed answer. He was about to be kicked out of Moscow and he committed suicide. The suicide was a, a fake out. He cut both his wrists. He got into a bathtub. He was in the Metropole Hotel. Not many people realize this. And he was going to bleed to death unless he was allowed to become a defector to the USSR. And, and he wasn't going to bleed to death, but this is what he did as an act. And because of the news coverage, in fact, Priscilla McMillan, who you see in, in Max Good's documentary, she su surprisingly turns up at Oswald's hotel in Moscow, the same woman who's in that documentary with Ruth Payne. And Oswald hits the news media, so the Soviets say, all right, we're going to let you stay for 90 days. And that's you mean the, the, the witting participant? The, yeah, the witting participant who wrote um, 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 Marina and Lee, the same book as Me and Lee, written by um, um, uh, Judith Barry Baker was written by Priscilla McMillan uh, as the Marina Oswald biography. She was at the Hotel Metropole with Oswald afterwards interviewing him. And it was a stunt by Oswald not to be kicked out of Moscow. And it worked. And they allowed him to stay. And then they transferred him to Minsk, uh, which they felt was not as sensitive for him to run around as Moscow was. Okay, that. they're saying Sarah Huckabee won the uh, primary. Oh, okay, that's what I was asking. Okay, so yeah. Arkansas, I think, is a pretty solidly red state. That's why I was saying so. that. Yeah, that's why I was wondering. She's going to be the next governor of Arkansas. Okay, so oh, yeah. why not? I'll okay. take it. It's a win. Yeah. Any other? Uh, you got one more, Eric? Or No, no, here, here we go. Selfish plug here. Can you please say hi to my dad and say hi to Paul K. Love this stream. Hi, Paul hi Dad. K. Hi, Dad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hi, Paul K. Yeah. You give us his last name, we would have said that too, but I guess he's in. Maybe. Oh, it all depends on how complex it is. I, right. mean, I have I have limits of my tongue here. Right. I don't know. All right. Is there going to be an episode about John J. McCloy? You know, it's funny. I'm reading his biography right now. Uh, it's a very large book, so that's, that is possible. I just got that book, and I'm looking at it now. And I, I have ordered or found on some obscure website, Books a Million, another copy of the that's general. That's obscure? Uh, but that's where I ordered mine, dude. I've never heard of it. So <laughs> it was one of the chains that shut down. Excuse me? It was a it's a big ass chain that um that Barnes and Noble squeezed out, but yeah, it's pretty pretty Okay. Big, yeah. Well what I'm saying is that's where I found the General Walker book. So Robert can keep his. He said it was on loan, so <laughs> he could keep it because I got another one. So in case Robert's watching, that's yours, bro. Yeah. Um I ordered mine too. I'm waiting for it though. Because okay, so in two weeks me. we're gonna have Barnes on, right? Yes. In two weeks, right? I think so, I think so. He wanted to talk about Kefalver, which we will, uh, the Kefalver committee. But also we, what we wanted to talk about, uh, which I'll talk to him about, is the fact that it's August 6th, and we're going to talk about the, uh, the Hiro Hiroshima bombing uh, and all the different side conspiracy theories about the atomic bomb uh, being used on Hiroshima because of it, it, August 6th being that particular day, I believe. So he doesn't know that yet, but if he's watching it now, <laughs> he will know. So we're going to touch. He asked about he wants to talk about Kefofa and um, that committee, the Rackets Committee. I think Kefofa is from Chattanooga and uh, it's also August 6th. So I thought about John Hershey, the book uh, Hiroshima, which I strongly recommend. It's a little short book. Uh, it has a bad ending, but um, we could talk. I wonder about what it. happened. It's, it's not good. 
But we could talk about the debate as to whether the at atomic bomb was necessary, that debate and certain other conspiracy theories revolving around uh, Hiroshima and the bombing of Hiroshima. As nice. of that date. So that's two weeks away. Tuesday, we've got um, David Ferry. Um, right, Eric? Yeah, that's our next next big one is David Ferry. And, well, that's uh, going to go yellow the second I open my mouth. Well, I'm, Okay, to let people know ahead of time, we haven't confirmed it yet, but David Ferry may be Tuesday and Friday. It if might it, be. Yeah, if, we don't. If it's a two-up, you know, it might be a two-parter. We'll see what happens. But Ferry is, is definitely a big part of the case, and he doesn't survive, but uh, he's got an interesting back life up until that case, and we're going to get into some of the things that Ferry did. And, and I, this is not for the children. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> don't let the children watch this one, ladies, because this is um, this is dark. A, this is dark. Yeah, this is pretty dark on David Ferry. But uh, Everything about him is dark. Right? All, right? all right. So on to the fun stuff here. For those who didn't know, I can't believe it. we're at 24294. I'm sure that we can get a few more subs here, folks. That'd okay. Amazing. But here's an overpriced Patsy dog <laughs> called Oswald. I think he's valuable and definitely worth the effort. He's soft, wonderful, great personality as he's held up and waved all over. Okay. What it's on the merch shelf it? below. Uh, we have polos that are here. We have <laughs> a, a cup and a bucket hat. Where do they go? The bucket oh, yeah. hat. Okay. The bucket hat's my favorite. The bucket hat fell to the floor. So. Right. This Check this is... out, people. Look at this. Look at this. Imagine this. That could be you. Yes. It, it could, could be, be you. Look how great that is. I mean, see, it, it, it covers items. a baldness and is a valuable tool. Gives you some more height also. If you're uh, get one for Viva, he'll look even taller. Put that hair on. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Another purple cup request. We, oh, someday we'll figure that out. <laughs> someday we're going to figure out how to make these. You know what it is? It's a supply chain <laughs> supply chain issue from China. We would really, in the old days, would have somebody in China making these. Like you know, when we were at National Lampoon. But now with the supply chain, Eric, it's really it's really difficult. And I think you've debunked this. Um, looked at James Files saying he was the shooter on the grassy knoll. Yeah, I, he's been debunked by quite a few people, including uh, Edward J. Epstein and others. You can go to Spartacus uh, International and see the debunking of James Files. However, uh, like all debunking things, there's always elements of truth in there. And I think that the Remington fireball was used as a weapon uh, in the assassination, which Files talks about. So people always say, well, you, you believe that he used the fireball. Uh, is it everything James Files said true? That's illogical, people. And that every single deep state operation has elements of truth in it. And James Files is part of that. He's been debunked, uh, claiming he was in Dallas. He was in Chicago at the time. There's a bunch of different things debunking Files. But I still believe the uh, XL Remington, uh, the XL100 Remington uh, gun was used uh, in some element of the assassination. All right. Well, Just perfect. My personal, my personal theory. Huge show. Um, over a thousand people watching right now. I hope you what? consider liking and subscribing on the this way is out. Crazy. Oh, it's Friday too. Well, they yeah. can follow me at Lord Buckley. I think mm -hmm. uh, Twitter's kind of fun. They can. Um, I'm also on Twitter, and I always do post Twitter. that the show's coming out on Twitter, and I do it again within a half hour of the show going live just because the notifications aren't always great. Oh, right, right. Hit the notifications bell. That's always important. Yeah, I, even I uh, start hitting it. I do get notified of these different things, you know. And, but not you know, always. I'm trying to get these books, people. You can help me out on PayPal if if you want to. You can go towards the book fund. I think it's like a maybe you can write it off on your taxes. Even it's given in a donation towards books or something. Hunley's he doesn't believe it, but with no, my tax lawyer, if you use my <laughs> tax lawyer, which I recommend, you can write it off, you can write it off from PayPal. But there's that, uh, and then there's uh, I know about your semi shady past, dude. <laughs> what about the um, what's the other one we use? The uh, uh, Venmo's up there. Oh, Venmo. Oh, yeah, Venmo. If you want that, um, locals and uh, seriously, locals, everybody, it's only five bucks a month if you want to join, but you can follow for free. And Look, a lot reality, of content's free reality, on there. We don't care if you pay anything. We're still going to do the goddamn shows anyway. So it would help us, but we don't really care. It would be great. Yeah. It's a bonus, but we're going to do it anyway, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so we have to do it for Ken Donnelly because that's this is his day job is to troll us. So uh, we've got that going on. And Robert likes the show. Barnes and some, apparently some other people. Um, 
That's uh, the rumor. There's other people who like the show and enjoy it. I don't know why, but it seems to be growing in size. We almost have 25,000 subscribers and, you know, close to a million and a half viewers. So this might be something that we stumbled onto. Of course, the deep state's going to step up their game, Eric. So, you know, as we get over the target, they're going to start shooting up uh, anti-aircraft guns. Not that we have heard anything from anybody recently. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, no comment on that. And on yeah. that note, folks, uh, have a wonderful evening and have we will nice see you weekend. Tuesday. See you Tuesday. Thank you.